So this is going to be a drawing of the clothespin. I think it's one word um, in isometric and a 200% scale, so two to one scale. And as a reference, we're gonna have our drawings that ideally they're finished and they have all the dimensions, but I'll keep the dimensions up for you to remind you what they are. And we'll, um, we'll draw the isometric based on these dimensions, meaning the real dimensions of the clothespin. So it's gonna be twice as big as the clothespin, okay? And I'll have this little drawing to get started which again is a reminder of the main dimensions, which is 16 by 10 millimeters by 84. However, we're gonna double them, right? So it's gonna be 32 by 20 by 168. Oh, that's right. Yeah, this happens to be already what we need. Um, okay, so I couldn't draw my title block because I have no room here at the bottom. So. Once again, we're gonna put the starting point at one quarter inch um, above the title block, okay? So that's half inch, three quarters, one and a quarter. So just give me a moment here to figure out for me what that point is because I need to make the drawing fit in the screen. Uh, let's see if I can figure this out from there. That's the bottom, okay. <clears throat> so this is just for me, okay? Um. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm actually just drawing a line here, okay? That will be my, sort of my starting point in my, and in my drawing it's gonna be here. Um, and um, so once again, you're going to need this triangle because uh, it's the 30, 60, 90 triangle, and it's gonna give us the angle for the isometric, which is, um, again, it just means the angles are both the same, okay? So again, as a reminder, these two angles or 30 degrees. <clears throat> um, and this is our vertical, okay? So these matches our standard triangle. Okay, so you should be able to do everything with this triangle um, for, that, for that horizontal axis and then the vertical, okay? Uh, and there isn't really any horizontal, but you'll need the tool for that to move your, your tools up and down, your other tools. Um, so I'm just going to start um, actually, let me just say a couple of things real quick. So we have these three views, right? Which is the front view, the side view, and the top view. And now what we need to do is we need to transfer these views onto a drawing that has all three of views simultaneously visible, right? And because, of course, some things will change, uh, you know, there's a few steps to involved. However, what will not change will be the three axis dimensions. So the dimensions will still be well, they'll get double, but they'll all be consistently the same. <clears throat> um, so what we'll need to do is, <clears throat> excuse me, if we have our, our basic dimensions, what we're doing is we're just moving those dimensions into these three axes, right? So this will be 20 millimeters, this will be, 32 millimeters, so maybe something like that. And this will be um, 
84 times 2 is uh, 168 millimeters. Yeah? So that's the first thing. So you can go ahead and start you know, drawing this um, as long as you keep, you know, as long as you use your triangle and you use your, your parallel edge to move this up and down. Uh, and then you flip it and you do that part and then you use it as a diagonal, okay? <clears throat> um, and what I wanted to say earlier was that so this image now needs to be here, the front needs to be here, the side needs to be here, and the top needs to be here, okay? And we're going to do that by simply bringing over some of these, some of these dimensions, and we're just gonna bring them across like that, the center, et cetera, and we start building it up, okay? Roughly, okay? Uh, and then we put the circles. And the way we put the circles again, we're gonna use the template because it's hard to draw <laughs> an ellipse with a compass. In fact, it's basically impossible. Uh, it would be a pseudo ellipse, but, so we're gonna take the 30 degree here. We'll figure out where, um, where, the, uh, where the center of those circles is, and then we can we can kind of match it, okay? And there'll be a little bit of construction involved. Did I do this right? Yeah. And that will look like, it doesn't look right now like a good circle, but that's more or less. Yeah, it's a little high. Should have drawn it a little bit more of a, it's more like that, okay? And I'll pass this around. We'll figure out which of these um, templates is correct for what we need. Um, and uh, yeah, so for those of you who might have come late, uh, again, this drawing is gonna be extra credit, but I want everybody to do it, meaning extra credit is optional. Um, but in this case, I want everybody to do it. And even if you did half, and even if you got 20 points out of 40 points, um, and that would be technically an F, don't worry about it because it's actually extra, right? So it would still be good for you to have those extra points. Um, but it would be nice, of course, if you could finish it because it's a nice, it's a nice drawing. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead now and, and block out my uh, outline of the box, okay? So I'm gonna have to put this away for a moment. Uh, the only thing that I need is these dimensions, okay? Do you have any questions while I quickly draw this? No? Um, I'll be using two triangles because it's, it's more easily, it's hard to just work with a, a ruler here as a, as a, you know, as a support for my other triangle. So mostly I'll be using two triangles. So fine, of course, um, not of course, but I decided that even though the drawing is gonna be slightly to the left overall, Let's just use the edge, what's called the leading edge of the pin, this corner, as our center, okay? Just to simplify things, okay? So, um, okay? Can you look up for a moment? So once again, this, this, this corner, let's just put that in the center of the page, even though that means that the whole thing will look a little bit over, okay? Just makes things a little easier. So that's, uh, yeah, four inches from my border or four and a half from my, uh, four and a half from the paper, four inches from the uh, border. So let's see. Okay, where are we? Four and a half. Okay, so this is the first step you should do. You should find your center, left to right, and just draw. Once again, I'm gonna draw my lines very pretty dark, but you um, wanna keep them light until you know that that's the final, okay? So I'm just setting up my main starting point here. Um, yeah. Okay. 
Something is a little slippery here. Okay, I don't really need this line. I could have marked it there, but I always like to have a crossing um, wherever I know that I need to take dimensions from, meaning this. You know, if that's the edge of my paper right now and I know I need to start here, um, and this is the line, and this is where I need to start. Even if I know what that is, it's a little hard to see, whereas if I have a line going across, it's much easier to hit than, you know, with further lines. In other words, it's, it's easier to find this spot, okay, than to find that spot. If I have to aim for it, I'm not sure exactly where it's gonna be, whereas here, I'm very sure, and if I do a line and I miss it, I know I've missed it because it's gonna be obvious, whereas here, um, you know, it's going to be less obvious. So always do a little crossing, whatever you know, we ne you know that you're going to need it as a reference. Um, okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to tape my, hopefully I won't need the, um, yeah, I'm going to tape my metal ruler here so that I don't have to always, It's a great idea. Well, except the tape is going to be in the way. a little easier, or go a little faster. Um, I tell you what, since we're going to be using this I'm going to tape that too. Stays there. Okay. Um, now again, I just before I take these other dimensions, I just have to do my axis here, right? So. <clears throat> oh, now I need another ruler. See, I just wanna, I wanna make sure I don't mess this up. 16, 32, 84, 168, yeah, that looks right. Okay, um, yeah, good. So these dimensions are good. Again, millimeters, um, much easier. So 32 to the left. Um, 20 to the right. And 168 to the top. So that would be 16 centimeters and um, eight millimeters. <clears throat> Once again, my lines are dark, but you sh yours should be light, okay? Because these are lines, really, they're not going to be part of the object. Uh, I wish I was higher now, but I'm not. Oh, well. And I'm almost done here with blocking out my
Okay. I'm going to stop for a moment now. I'm just going to come around and see if you need help. Um, but that will be our container, right? That will be our container in, into which we'll put all the other details. So what we're going to do now is we're going to transfer some of these main dimensions um, mainly on the front because that's where all the features are, right? So all these distances, um, which now we do have to figure out what they are because we need to double them. So 33 will become 66, 11 will become 22, 40 will become 80. Um, and maybe as I do them, I'll just mark them, okay? Um, so whatever is a horizontal line in this drawing becomes, you know, a slanted line, even though it's representing still a horizontal. And so just use your, tri your tool, just bring up your um, parallel edge. Make sure your parallel edge is not wobbling, okay? Um, and so just use, you know, take your measurements and then draw the lines like this. Also draw the center line um, of the front, meaning split, uh, split the 32 into 16 and draw a center line, um, which I'll do that right away because that's kind of, it's gonna drive a lot of the information, okay? Um, try to be very exact on that because I get my head in here. Maybe I'll do it here. Be a little easier. Um, and I'm going to double check because I'm having I'm a little challenged here by the camera. Yeah, okay. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and write it. Um, let's, let's draw like these first two dimensions, which are where, well, actually four. It's basically where all these circles are, OK? So the first one is the double one. That's at um, uh, 32 millimeters from at the top, because it's 16. Uh, and why don't I just go ahead and write it here? So this is 32. Um, I'm doubling them for you, okay, already. So this was 16 millimeters originally becomes 32. The second uh, hole is 33, so that becomes 66 from the top. Like that. 66, then, um, then we can do it a couple of ways. I guess we can, we can measure from the bottom. Uh, that's 40 originally, so now it becomes 80. And the one in between here is 11, so that becomes 22. So you'll find that as you measure these things, it's, like, it's possible that when you all add it up, it might not be exactly, you know. So try to be as close as, as you can. Um, it, it's not a crime, right, if this is slightly off. But it's, it, you should try to get all your millimeters to basically, um, uh, you know, be accounted for, okay? So I don't know if you can read it. Can you see that? So the, the thing to watch out for is that the first one is 32 millimeters from the top, the first line, uh, but the other two are counting from the top to it, to here, so it doesn't, this is a total, right? This is a partial, this is a total, that's another partial and another partial. I mean, meaning a total of these two, one and two, whatever that is. Yeah, I'm just making it more complicated than it really is, but. Um, I could probably also draw it. Um, yeah, why don't I draw it right here? So six, 
32. 66. And then this is 80, yeah? And then the center line. Yeah, that should be pretty, I'm gonna double check them now. Okay, 40 becomes 80, 11 becomes 22, 33, oops, sorry. Let's see, 66, yeah, 66 and 32, yeah. Okay, if it's not clear, just let me know, okay? And I'll, I'll say it again, but um, I think it's pretty, pretty, um, it's correct now. So I'm going to now measure all these distances, and I'll say 32. Then I'll go down 66, so six centimeters and six millimeters. Uh, and then I'll start from the top and let's see if I'm, if I'm accurate and I come up with an 11 left over, but I mean 22. Let's see, 80. Hey, pretty good, look at that, perfect. Okay, so I was able to actually follow that and get exactly, um, those partial divisions. So, uh, again, I, I, I'm using my triangle because I don't have your, okay, so now that I've, I've marked these on the side, so the idea is that everything that's on the edges, you can trust and you can sort of work from because everything that's in the middle might be slightly deformed or different shape, but whatever is on the edge stays true to the, um, it, it doesn't get distorted. Um, okay. Um, again, I'm going to d really darken my lines, but once again, I repeat myself, but you shouldn't. You should keep them light until you know which lines really you need to darken for the object, yes? Um. Okay. I'm gonna do one more thing and then I'm gonna come around and check. So what I want to do now is define, because the pin is, is tapered, right? It's a trapezoid. Um, I'm just going to find those spots at the top and start building it up, okay? Um, so I refer to my drawing. And if you recall, we, we decided that all these little details would be two millimeters wide, okay? in the true original, right? And then we made them three in this drawing, but for this other drawing, which is twice as big, if this is two millimeters, two millimeters, two millimeters from the side, etc., we're just gonna make that four, right? So original, it's two. In our drawing, we make them four. So what we need to draw is we need to leave leave four millimeters and then draw four more. It's a little bit out of scale now, but. Okay, so that we define these two spots and the center, of course. Um, okay, so these will be, each one of these will be four millimeters from the edge. Right, so this edge is this edge, this line is this side, left, right side, and this line is the left side, and we're just gonna make these all four millimeters in our drawings, yes? So here, I would just mark off four millimeters. Four, 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 four. Um, I'm gonna do that right now.
So trying to trying to make them even, it's hard because I can't can stick my head under the camera, otherwise I'll block it. Um, To do it differently. Yeah, sorry, I have to I have to do a little gymnastics here to get my. Okay, there. Yeah, pretty good. Okay, so you can't quite see them, but I just took these distances: four millimeters, four millimeters from the left side, four millimeters, four millimeters from the right side, and now. Um, you know, we could call this maybe x and this y. So this becomes, oops, um, this is our x and this is our y. And this, of course, would be our, our z. Um, so the right line here is my x, this is my y. And I now translate this using the triangle again, like this, okay? Um, so I take a known line that is already, you know, exact. Sorry about the washing out here, but... Um, and I just draw my line. So make sure every time you always go back to your... Uh, correct position, okay? Um, and then if, you, if they don't look even to you, you can just, yeah, right now mine didn't look so good, so sorry, I'm gonna have a little bit fuzzy lines, okay? Um, now that I have that, I am going to simply connect um, the very tip, right, on the right side, the very tip on the left side, to the very tip, tips at the bottom, right? Because those are actually touching, these are actually the corners I already have. Um, okay, sorry about, again, the exposure here. But these, these two guys, these two little lips here, or one and two, okay? So what I have to do now is just draw some very, very long lines from the very top to the bottom at an angle. And, um, and so that's the interesting thing that happens now. I'm going to exaggerate this shape, right? But this is what we just did, right? So what happens now is that this line, when I connect it, is gonna be a different line from that. And that's how it works. That's the way it really looks, that's the way it's correct. Um, the fact that the difference because of the angles, because things get squished this way and expand this way. Um, but because my references are on the outer edges, on this main axis, X, Y, and Z, uh, that's how I construct the parts that you know, are more variable, okay? So, let's see, so again, I go from that tip to there. And I do it the one from the back as well. Um, now the back side you don't really see, so I would leave it alone for now. In other words, this part, just leave it alone because unless, unless you wanted to make like an x-ray drawing, you know, where you see all the lines in the back too, but that would get kind of complicated. Yeah. Um, okay, I'll lift this here. Let me darken them again um, so that everybody can see the shape. Um, 
And maybe this is a good time to double check that um, we have about seven more minutes before the break uh, to double check that your overall dimensions are, um, are uh, correct, okay? And, uh, and once again, the dimensions in your drawing are the ones in parentheses, so, so these would be your totals, okay? Okay, now, we drew the lines where our circles are gonna be located, right? So we drew the line for circle number one, number two, and number three. And now, um, before we actually move on to draw those circles as ellipses, let's finish this other part because it's gonna get crowded with all the lines. Um, so if you recall, when we did the um, orthographic, I, um, well, I kind of eyeballed it and I, and I figured the geometry to be uh, such so that the inner points at the base here of these lips, we're going to meet the inner points at the top in a cross fashion, so in an X fashion, and so that those two lines, you know, going like this as a cross, would then give me the bottom part that I need, uh, where they met this distance here for the for the last hole at the bottom. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and, and basically draw these shapes now inside our face here. So one thing we need to do though is also draw the little V right here. So the little V was five millimeters in the original, so we're gonna make it 10. So this line is gonna be a 10 millimeter from the top. Again, make, mark your measurements on the outer edge, okay? On the glass box, not on the actual object, because we need to then come in from there. Um, so that's gonna give us this point, and, that, and we'll use then that point to connect to these other two points, which again I determine, are determined by the X. So I'll leave, I'll leave this, um, this is also four. And again, everything that's in parentheses is what I'm actually drawing, right? Um, This technically goes here, and this goes here. Um, so let's do that because then that way we get that those lines out of the way and when we do the circles on top, um, I think it's gonna be easier, I'm not sure, maybe it's the other way around, but anyway. Um, So what is, I'll, I'll do, I'll mark that distance from the top in the middle, in the middle line, right? So again, it's 10, so 10 millimeters from the top, which is this distance, yes? Um, so again, every time, every time I do it, I have to reset my triangle because um, I don't have that nice straight edge you all do. Okay. And now that I have, oops, sorry. Now that I have done that, um, I can actually connect these, um, uh, make the V. In other words, draw that V, right? To the two inner tips. Um, yes? So it'll be this part and that part. Um, again, apologize for the exposure here. I can't control it. Um, I have to wear a white shirt, I think, because the black, the black makes it overexposed. Okay, there we go. Right? And Oh, I did something wrong. It doesn't look right. Why doesn't it look right? Uh, 
maybe that doesn't look right. Maybe it's my other one that no, but that looks right. Uh, let me double check. Is it supposed to be 15? No, because it's five here. Did I? Oh yes, thank you. <laughs> That's right. I connected to the I connected to the other spot instead of to the inner spot. Okay. <laughs> I knew it because the way I drew it, I would be able to see this other inside part, and I knew I couldn't from my original drawing. So something is off. Okay, I just made one line wrong. The other is okay. Thank you. It's actually hard to do two things at once, you know, talking and, and also, I think that's why actors are good. They can, they can have multiple stuff going on. Um, okay. And now I'm actually, I can do this pretty dark because I know it's not going to change. And it's going to, let's see if... This makes it a little better. Hold on a second. I don't think it's affecting my recording, but it's um, maybe this. I don't know. Okay. Is it a little better? Maybe. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I can, I can go ahead and actually darken these parts. Um, and we can do the line in the back too. The line in the back will simply be a parallel to that line. And for that, you do need two triangles because you need to, um, you need to pick up that angle, right? Pick whatever this angle is, just make sure you match it. And then using the other triangle, you slide across until you hit the back side, okay? So I'm gonna do that. Um, I'm going to, in other words, match, match that angle, set everything correctly, and then slide across to get the back, yeah? And so I just, I just drew, maybe I just need to make everything darker about that. Okay, so I just drew these this back line right here, right? Right there. I think it's the triangles that are driving me crazy. Um, okay. So let's review this diagram again. Okay, everybody. So we have got now these inner, oh, we need the inner points at the bottom too. So those are going to be four, um, four millimeters inward, right? Okay, so make sure you mark those as well uh, on each side, yes? Because there were two in original and they're gonna be four. Um, and again, they're hard to see, so I just do, I'm a little, maybe, you know, overkill here, but I do a little line like this because then I can really see what that spot is, okay? It's gonna give me a nice reference. Um, so, so what we're going to do now is we're going to connect, I think we call them points uh, A and B. So this guy. A and B to C and D, like that, okay? Okay? And where, that, where, that, where those two lines cross uh, my, first, my first, my bottom hole, in other hole, hole number three, um, that's gonna give us these other two points. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, 
again, from the inner tips of the top to the inner tips of the bottom. And those are the, those are the lines that will give us the lower part. The, um, we're going to use those lines to figure out these two, okay, to use to save those. So it's a, it's a kind of an X with the, with the center very high. Well, something is wrong. I did the same thing I did before. <laughs> Sorry. I connected the wrong line here, so I'm just going to slightly raise it. It's amazing, huh, how easy it is to make mistakes. So instead, I have to connect here. Uh, again, inner point to inner point. Your crossing of these two lines should be, of course, in the middle, right? They should hit the middle line. Um, and of course, now my lines are a little bit... Roughly, okay. Um, you should wait to darken these lines. Again, I'm doing them dark so you can see them because um, they will be, they'll be stopping where the circles are going to be drawn, right? So we don't want to... Um, So that will give us these two other points, which in my earlier drawing I didn't, I didn't actually. Um, oh, actually, I did. I did mark them as F, F and G, A, B, C, D, E. Right. I call this E, and I call this F and G. Okay, so if, if you have done that cross and it looks right, like mine looks pretty right, looks a little bit off to the right, it's not perfect, but um, so those two points now, these two guys right here, where it crosses, um, where it crosses my circle number three line, um, we're then gonna use and connect to this spot, which is the V, the bottom of the V, okay? Um, so, like that. So this is distorted, but it allows you to see, okay? Looks like a, a burning man, um, doesn't it? <laughs> the original, I guess. Okay, all right, so let's connect those points. So from there to there. Uh, there we go. Yeah, now it's it's a little busy there because again my lines are too dark, but um, but we just drew that right now, right? We connected that spot to these two spots which are there somewhere, and we get this very shallow gap right there, right? Um, all right, so let's draw this ellipsis, and then we'll be close to being done, actually. Um, so we really might be finishing this today. Um, also, um, we're not going to put dimensions on this drawing, because in fact, this kind of drawing is really not meant to show you know, construction instructions. It's really just a picture of it. Um, whereas a drawing like this will have, you know, the information that the person needs it if they were going to make it, right? Um, 
But it's nice to have something like this that gives a, a sense of what the finished object will look like. Um, so don't worry about adding dimensions. So let's locate now where these um, circles are. And obviously these are in this, well actually no. These two, these two little bits are going to be along the lines, okay, along the edge of that part. So it's a little, it's a little hard to see, but, uh, so these are gonna be two half circles lying on those two edges which we just drew, right? On these edges that we just drew here. Uh, this one is gonna be a single circle, so that's easy, just smack in the middle there. And then these are two, but they're shifted, right? So they'll be on the same axis, but shifted by the same amount as the radius. Um, so let's figure out what they were. They were, um, okay, they were 10, so it becomes 20. They were four and a half, so it becomes nine. They were nine, so it becomes 18. So let me write here um, uh, what these are, Let's see. 10, so this becomes 20. That's the diameter, yes? Uh, this one becomes, was four and a half, uh, no, sorry, three, so six, okay. And this one was six and becomes 12 millimeter. Okay, let's see if we get it right. Um, again, these are all diameters, yes? So this is number one. Number one, number two. Yeah, number two and number three. Um, and what I did, I tried to find on my template the closest uh, ellipse. These are the inches, so I, I had a little bit of a tough time but I found, so that would be, wait, I did this wrong, that's actually, oh yeah, so this would be the biggest one for the biggest circle there. Uh, the middle one is it's here. Yeah, and the last one is the one down here, okay? So let's, let me talk briefly, if you recall, when we did our bottles, how we do ellipses, right? So, um, if we have a circle in a square, seen from the top, it's pretty much what it is, right? It, it touches all your, uh, your edges and it's tangent to those. So when we draw our um, isometric, what happens is these edges move out and these, edge, and these, corners, these corners move out, these, these, uh, these corners move in so that we end up with this, right? Okay. And um, so now we have to inscribe our lips in that. So this is the view of that. I drew it a little bit bigger, but that's the idea. Uh, and we just said that we make ellipses because it's much easier than drawing a circle in perspective, which would be a really hard circle to draw because as you draw it, it would be constantly changing and the top part would be different than the bottom part. And even though it would be slight, this would be a true circle in perspective, but that's too hard. So instead we just, we just draw an ellipse inside this. And also we said that if this is 30 and 30, um, it gives us a kind of a convenient way of drawing them. Um, meaning this is our triangle right here. Um, and we also said that this direction is the short axis of the ellipse, okay? And it matches whatever object main direction is. So if it's, if it's a bottle, right? If it's a bottle, that main direction gives us the short, um, the length of the short axis. In other words, the short axis of the ellipse matches that general direction. So for our pin, if you imagine this being like this, 
lying on the ground, and perhaps there is, if this was just one circle, okay? So if that was just one circle there, if it was open like that, um, the ellipse that I need to draw uh, that would also define that pencil would have the short axis going with that main direction, okay? It's a very simple, very simple rule. And the opposite direction, you have to remember, it's always perfectly um, perpendicular. In other words, it's not like this, okay? It's not like that. It's always nice and straight. And um, what we're doing now, our circle is not, um, it's not like this. Our pin is not shown like this, but in fact, it's shown like this, right? So what we need to draw is we need to draw the ellipses on the side because it's standing, right? And if we had a cube, would be a, a way to kind of simplify how we would draw ellipses on the side of a cube or a circle, okay? And this principle of, of having the main direction match uh, the short ellipses, the short axis of the ellipses would apply in the same way. So if I have my, if I'm looking at my pin like that, um, okay, imagine I take a saw and I cut this pencil and I see that ellipse and when I draw it, I have to match the short axis with this direction and the long axis is the opposite direction in a, in a perfect cross. So how would that be? Um, it would be like this. If this was extended and this was my pin, right? Somehow here. Um, right? So imagine that's my, uh, that's my, the extension of my pin, okay? So I'm just going to locate, let's, I'm just doing a generic circle now. Let's just say that my circle is going to be maybe here. Um, somewhere here, okay? Okay, so again, I take this direction, which would be my pencil going through the pin, um, and then I just do a line that's perfectly opposite, right? Meaning perpendicular, like that. Um, these are my axes to give me, and then I would draw my ellipse like that, okay? And that's gonna be the correct drawing of a circle um, on the side of this guy right here, okay? It will be this one, kind of like that. Um, sorry, like that. It's a little odd now because this is confusing. That's gonna be a double one. So what, um, what I have here, you could technically draw with a compass, a pseudo ellipse, you know, with different apertures, but it's too complicated. So we're just gonna use the template. I can find it. Um, and, uh, the template has these uh, little tick marks, these crosshairs. So we're going to match uh, and align. And you see how there's also different, um, different degrees. So this is like if we had a cube that was more like this, more like squat. So then this ellipse would be more open, right? So the proportions would be a little different. This is more squished. Uh, so that's the 30 degree one. And we're going to match the, uh, the tick marks with our axis. So what we need to do is actually draw these lines so then we can find the one that's closest. Um, okay, so you see I'm, I'm matching my little tick marks. Um, these guys. And I would, I would make that fit into my box in the correct way until it's perfectly aligned like that. You see it? So once I, when I pass this around, you'll have to have that structure ready so that you can um, insert your, your ellipses like that, okay? And again, they're gonna be three. Uh, hole number one, two, and three, and these are one, two, and three, okay? So let's, um, let's locate now all these spots. Um, the first one is easy because it's there. Um, and we know the dimension is 
12. So what we need to do is we need to draw a box on our uh, isometric that is 12 by 12, right? Because it's diameter. And then here, it's actually two. So, um, so these are going to be a little bit different because, again, they're going to be overlapping. Um, how do I show this? Um, yeah, well, we, we have to draw two squares, six by six, and they're going to be slightly overlapping. And then these are going to be, uh, these are uh, 20 millimeters. So these will be two. Okay. Two squares, 20 by 20. And they're going to be offset by 10. So there's a little trick on how to locate that. So why don't we, why don't we start doing the, probably the harder one which is drawing, this is your middle, which is this line, right? So we need to draw two squares, but they're overlapping 10 by 10, which means that there's gonna, the centers are gonna be offset five from this, the centers of the square are five millimeters from each, um, from each guy. And I, I think if it's easier if I just go ahead and do it and show you. Um, I don't want to zoom because I'm afraid I'm going to mess up my recording and I'm not sure what exactly my, my phone is, is doing there. So from the center here, just simply mark, um, again, they're 20 by 20, which is half is 10, and they're, they're really five from the, from the side. So. Challenged here, so so your your centers should be, um, if you do it right, should be slightly off the earlier X. Um, um, Yeah, so if I were to draw it here, well, this is not proportional, so I don't wanna, I don't wanna mess it up, but um, I'll, I'll just come around and check. So again, they're five millimeters, um, and then they're 10 and 10, but that goes too big, let me think here. Oh yeah, okay. I'm just going to check my drawing because I have. A, I want to make sure. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, so. Um, Yeah, so the, there are, and the, but then there'll be 20 and 20, right? So the, the construction will almost go to the edge here of your original box. Let me just draw it because Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to darken my lines because otherwise it'll be really. It will get really complicated. But um, 
But I do want to draw now these lines, which are, again, the axis of our original hypothetical pencil. And we want to draw the opposite axis. And the opposite axis is actually the other side of your triangle. Um, I'll take a piece of trace and see if I can show um, what I just did. So I'm just I'm just going to show it now in relation to the other box. Um, Maybe I'll use a different color uh, pencil. A good idea. Actually, I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit. No, I don't want to mess up the focus. <laughs> I'm just too, too scared. Um, OK, so. I'm going to draw on the side, you know, the, as if it was. OK. So basically, these two points are going to be at 5 and 5. And then I'm going to build a square that is 10 by 10 and 10 by 10. OK. So this, I mean, sorry, 20 by 20. Right? This will be the two, the two centers of the two overlapping circles, right? So this will be this circle, and this will be this circle. will be 20. Yeah? Um, so when you do your construction, you would do um, first find these vertical guys. And then on top of that, build your um, build your two squares. OK, I hope you can see it now that I'm separating it out. Um, and I'll use a different color for the, uh, yeah, that's. That's the way you should have your construction, OK? It looks like everybody more or less has these locations now. I'm going to, um, yeah, we got 20 more minutes. So I think I'll, I'll, I'll try to finish now. Um, and we have all day on Thursday, too, to complete. Um, that's why, by the way, tracing paper is nice and important, because you can, when you start getting lost, you can you can isolate things. You know, it's like Photoshop, you know, opacity in Photoshop, you know. 10%, 50%, 80%, 100%. Um, and now I'm going to, as soon as I do my, actually, before I draw my, I'm going to draw my, um, my little squares here, too, which were, 
Let's see, we said that these are six. And again, these now are, it's a little bit tricky because they are on these edges, right? On these two lines. Um, in other words, they're sitting, the two little circles, they're sitting, half a circles, they're sitting on that, on that gap. Um, in other words, if I were to do an enlarged, they're actually here, right? This, I'm, I'm exaggerating now. So what I need to do is kind of build a square around that edge, which is a little bit odd because it's at an angle, but because it's so small, we can, we can just approximate it. Um, but it is six millimeter squares, so you have to find where they are here. Um, yeah, actually in my drawing, they happen to be overlapping in the same way, slight, in almost the same way as the other two up, up there. So I'll just, uh, the, the main thing to remember in this one, because it's so small, um, is really just the crossing, okay? The crossing, um, you know, this is really where, so when I give you the template, you can just, you can just, and you do these lines, you can just sort of match, uh, match your ellipses to these, in other words, with your with your tick marks and your crosshairs, you can just match it to it. Okay, um, I just like to build the boxes around because I'm a box building kind of guy, I guess. Um, so I I just do that because it looks pretty. Um, but. To be fair, you really wouldn't need to. Once you, once you have these, um, the axes going in the right directions, really technically, if you had a template, of course, um, you wouldn't need to. So I'm going to now draw my, um, my main axes, these guys, for my ellipses, right? And these have to go right on that edge. Um, Sorry, I'm not zooming in, so it's a little hard to see, but. Um, there's gonna be a, a little measure of adjusting here, you know, by eye. And then down here, it's straightforward. That's exactly, um, that's exactly 12 millimeter box. So I measure six and six, six to each side. Okay. Um, and I build it. And again, when I say I build a square, what I mean is that this is my line, right? So I measure six to this side and six to this side, and then using the same angles, um, this would be 12, right? So I measure six to the left, six to the right. Um, and technically six up and down, but because with my triangles I can find the other point here by simply extending this, I don't have to actually measure, uh, meaning I can, I can take the center of that circle and just go across like that, and I get my top of my box. Uh, but you can measure it. You can also measure six and six up and down. Um, so once again, a, six, a 12 by 12 box built around that center. Um, and then your diagonals using your triangle again, right? So this is the opposite. So this is the long, the long axis of the ellipse when we draw it. Um, Yeah. Okay. So that's, this is the long axis, which is this angle on your triangle, and the other axis is this one, which is this edge on your triangle. Um, so that we can then use those crosshairs. So now I'll just go ahead and draw all my, um, all my parts, and then I'll pass these around. So number one on my ellipse is here. And I go in and I find 
I find that, yeah, there they are. Number one, I have to make sure. Number one, two and three, so this is number one. And just, I just look for my, uh, for my crossings here. And I draw them. And I do the same here just by shifting. Um, Okay, and that's where you really need one of these guys, one of these mechanical pencils, because to get a sharp, a sharp line inside that circle, it's, it will be hard if you have a thick, a thick pencil. Now, because I, um, because I already have these lines, when I when I do this, um, I can already stop. Um, let's see. Yeah, I can already stop now my drawing where this line is, right? So when you go back in and make them darker, you would, you would stop the actual drawing of that curve um, when it meets those two lines, right? And because I, I'm, I'm there and it's fresh, I'm going to do that right now. Um, let's see, number one. There and again, I'm I'm just aligning my my. Um, let me make these a little darker so you see them on the screen. Right, these are my my axes, my um, ellipses axes. Then now, um, yeah, so now I just darken the part of the ellipse, uh, but stopping where it meets those lines that go up and down, right? Then I shift it. I try to match again my... And we talked about this, you know, we say, oh, why don't we just draw something like this? Well, because this would be a shape that's perfectly symmetrical left to right. And this is symmetrical, but in a kind of shifted way, right? This part is symmetrical to that and this to this, but they're not, it's not perfectly specular, right? And that's the correct shape. Uh, okay, so now I take number two right here. Uh, the template is a little big, okay, so um, in fact it's, yeah, because there were inches. So again, I'm, I'm just now matching my, all my axes. Um, right here, I find it, and again, I eventually I stop it where the, um, but first I draw it just to get it in place. And then I, I darken it, just that part. Okay. And then number, number three is here. So there I just, I just find it. Um, again, I darken my my axis so that I can really match my crosshairs. Um, number three here. So again, I, I, match, I match my crosshairs on the template. Um, and I've got 10 minutes left, so I'll, I'll really uh, rush a little bit now so I can finish it, especially for the video. And then after I do that, again, I stop at the line that go up and down, the lines that go up and down. And now I uh, darken those again so that it starts to take shape. Um, and my trick again is to start at the endings of the line and go towards the middle and connect them this way as opposed to trying to go from A to B and kind of stop cold turkey where I get to the end because that would be hard. Um, so, 
We almost finished. That was amazing. Um, And we're not going to worry about the spring because the spring would be hard to draw because um, it's a helix. It's much more complicated than circles. Um, ah, oops. Sorry. I drew, I darkened the wrong line. That's emptiness. Um, Hey, getting close. Okay, so since I want to finish now, I'll finish this line here, which is, I think we might be able to see a little bit of the back because it's, um, oh yeah, I can just use my tool, just bring over the corner. And yes, you see a little bit of the back. There's a little bit of a, um, but the angle I have to match here. So I have to match this side. I, I take a reading of that line and I transport, and even though it's just a tiny bit that I need here, um, you know, it's nice to be precise, right? Um, and I think for now, the only thing that we're missing is the, um, the notches on the side, so maybe we'll finish those on um, on Thursday, but I won't videotape that for now. I'm just going to pretend that they're not there. Um, and I'm going to darken everything, yes? So the importance of keeping your tools always kind of in sync is that, again, you don't have to guess every time, right? So right now, I'm just darkening this line. I take a reading again, and I, oh, now this is challenging because it's at the top. Like I, I was thinking it could be a little skyscraper in the shape of a clothespin. Crazy idea, but. Okay, one last line and then we're done. And let's just even say that it's up to you if you want, since I'm not gonna, uh, for the video, I'm not gonna tape the part where we do the, um, Oh, so these little bits now with these circles, actually those need to go inside, right? They're gonna, you know, fall towards the back. So actually we should darken, we should show those, those edges um, like this, just by picking up wherever they are. So, because it will give it a little bit of uh, three-dimensionality, right? A little more. Just a tiny bit there. You see it, how it's... Okay, I think that's done. So I'll just say for the video that um, this would be just a matter of figuring out where the dimensions are again, right? On your um, on your orthographic, you know, plot them, you know, at the right at the right size. Plot them on the edge, bring them in, like that, and just 
cut out those notches, okay? Um, so for the video, again, I won't, I won't do it because this is the end of this video, but um, it shouldn't be too hard, right? Basically following the same, the same um, system. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you.